Send it. <laughs> hey, I'm Josh from the Fractured Rooster, and we're back in Watch Jargo's massive shop here, and we've basically got the we've got the Fractured Rooster collection going on here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is facts. Uh, so we left off on the 33 needing to update all of these parts on the floor here. This old power ejection EFI, it's just old. It's probably as old as I am. It needs to go. So we're taking the long route. We called Holly. We said, hey, we need to get that off there. Uh, but I saw you have this new X-Flow EFI coming out. Uh, I already have a Holly sniper that I want to put on the 33, but it's on the Mustang. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, hey, how about you send me that X-Flow and we'll take the long route. We'll put the X-Flow on the Mustang and then we'll put the sniper on the 33 and they said, cool, we love it. Yep. So, and we'll put the working power ejection <laughs> on the other power ejection. It's oh. a musical fuel injection. Yeah, I forgot. There's a third move here. Yeah. It's like chess around here. Yeah, it is. 3D, so, 3D chess. <laughs> so the old power ejection is going to go on to the 79 CJ5 that I don't think I've introduced yet. And all of these new parts are going on the Mustang. Just, it's just too much power once you open this box and you see that this is a fuel pump. Yeah. So if you're thinking that's a whole lot of fuel pump for a small block Ford, you're right. It is. It is a whole lot of fuel pump. Uh, but there's a plan for that. So the X-Flow is built for boost, essentially. And uh, why not? The Mustang's got a little 347 stroker in it. Uh, on a stock triple X block, which is good to about 450, maybe 500 rear wheel horsepower. 550 is really pushing it. You're dancing on a, on a very thin line there. So 400 to 450, and that's, that's where it's at. I can't really go anymore with it currently. So uh, the first step is to swap all this EFI. And then once it's done, we're going we're gonna to go for boost. I'm going to order a dart block and transfer all the guts of that motor into that dart block because that motor's really built. Yeah. Yep. Watch a previous episode of Watch JR Go to see all the goodies inside that engine. The guts of that engine are solid. It, the, the internals are good to a thousand plus horse. They're just the blocks holding it back. So first step in making big boost is to upgrade the EFI and the fuel system, uh, get it running again, and then we'll pull that engine out and probably within a weekend, uh, swap everything over and put it all back together. Yeah. And then we can start turning that boost up. But for now. But for now, we're going to do the old, the three step. Me. Holly swap. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the EFI swap. Uh, yeah. So I suppose first thing would be like an unboxing. We got the fuel pump out and that thing is a brushless. Is there a rating on that thing? There's a sheet in here, but anyway, here's the controller for it, right? So we'll have to give it some power over here. And then this side feeds the fuel pump. And uh, here's the harness, fuses. How big is this fuse? That's actually the most interesting thing about a fuel pump when gonna, it has a 30. I'm going to say a 30. A yep. 30 amp fuse to run it. Wow. Yep. Yeah, so you can decide. Do you want to start your engine or run the fuel pump? Um, this thing will flow max horsepower on, it looks like race gas is 2,400 horsepower in A wow. and 1,800 force induction. So. That's a little more than we need. Yeah, max current draw is 19 amps. <laughs> Pretty cool. But when you're boosting, the last thing you want to do is run out of fuel. That's right. So the 12-1500. 12 12-1500. So that's the fuel pump we're going to throw on there. And then uh, what is, this box is like a, looks like a crossover tube. Yep. Oh. And finally, in the big box. One. Yeah, finally the brains of the operation. The Holly 550 545 Sniper X Flow 8 injector in black. Thought about throttle, throttle body mounted ECU 900 CFM with 120 pound injectors. Eight of them. That's awesome. <laughs> and a 3.5 inch touch screen. She's large. She is large. So everything's tapered and beveled for smooth flow, bigger bores, bigger injectors, but otherwise I think it's pretty much the same, same design. Is there another touch screen in here? Oh, there should be. Find out. Oh, yep. Yeah, buddy. Another controller, USB cable, all the wiring, all the power wiring there. Yeah. Um, 
And is there a wide band? Yep, there it is. There she be. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So since the Mustang's already got a Holly Sniper on it, this is going to be more of an upgrade video than an install video. But that means it'll be a short, quick video. Should be running by the end of it. So here's the current engine. Like I said, just a, a, a pretty mild, or I wouldn't say mild, a, a, a pretty simple 347 cubic inch, what's like a 30 over with a little bit more stroke uh, and a stock five liter block. Nothing special here. Trick flow 190 cylinder heads, as cast. There's no porting or anything done to them. I think the engine's around a 12 to one compression. So it, it's not gonna like a lot of boost, but eight to 10 PSI, it'll be fine. Uh, cam specs, we did decam it a little bit when we had it out last time, but it's still, it's still quite a big cam. I think it's like a 230 something, 240 something duration with a six, 610 lift. A lot of oil coming back up through the thing. Yeah, it was running really rough when we had it out the other day. It was running rough. It'd been sitting for a long time. Oh, that's just carbon. Oh, cool. No worries. Again, very simple, tried and true, 347 stroker build. The engine was previously in a, like a mud drag racing truck. He had the red line set in the MSD at like 8,200 RPM or 7,800 RPM. Crazy. He would just run it like that for 10 to 15 seconds straight. On the limiter? On the limiter. That's all they do. So because of that, he balanced the engine insanely. And it, and you can tell when you get this thing on the rev limiter, it just lives there. It feels like you're driving a boat. Yeah. It's just yeah. high RPM. It loves it. It's so smooth and it just makes power and bounces off the rev limiter. I've turned it down to like 60, 68 or seven or something like that, but it still makes power all the way to it. But it will be fun when we double that power, when we, <laughs> when we double the amount of atmospheres going into it. Cool, so yeah, we're just going to have to unhook all the harnesses, uh, unhook your four, the four bolts, the linkage, the fuel line, drop the new unit on, hook all those things back up. We think. I mean, this is fully untested. <laughs> we hope. This is guessing. Uh, we're going to leave the 3.5 inch touch screen that's in the car. So when we turn the key on the new unit, we'll probably have to go back through the wizard, but it'll keep all the files saved onto the SD card. I'm hoping we can just maybe yeah, through the laptop, copy and paste the fuel and spark curves. Yeah, and I don't know if it'll scale like that, but I guess we'll see. No. Let's get after it. Cool. Well, that was super fast. What, 10 minutes did that take us, John? Yeah, just a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, but uh, through the YouTube time warp, we fast forwarded to a couple of days later, because as soon as we got the, that old throttle body off, we, uh, we realized that it was internally regulated and that the new throttle body is externally regulated. Yep. And we had to get a fuel a pressure regulator. Big regulator. Where'd that go? It's right here. Oh in front of my eyeballs. Yeah, I put it there. So the old throttle body was internally regulated. This is the new one. And uh, you know, I was looking at trying to, trying to figure out how to mount this to the firewall or to the frame, somewhere where the lines would be away from heat. And you know, if we got, God forbid, get into an accident, we're not gonna rupture or pinch a line. And uh, we looked online and realized that Holly wants you to just hang this right off the back of the throttle body. So we went and bought a female female dash six union and we we're just going to attach it right to the throttle body and that solves that problem well i mean we're uh ready to install i think okay like, yeah, so we're done here really nothing we're to really it just kind of sitting on the floor because i <laughs> <laughs> don't know why i don't want to make those old man noises on camera when i get up so anyway we did swap this thing out uh capped off the front fuel ports on this thing and moved to the back ones and the regulator is now uh, mocked up hanging off the back on an AN6, uh, and we got AN8 for the input uh, because monster fuel input, even though that later on is probably gonna have to go even bigger. It's probably gonna be a return in the future will be the eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have to go to 10 and eight for return. A whole lot of little holes drilled in that throttle body for all that fuel that's going in there. I like it. So crazy. Anyway, big boy. Yeah.
Cool, let's throw it on. Yep. Ten minutes or so of wrenching and the new throttle body's back on. You can see our fuel return here. It's still loose. We haven't tightened any of that up yet. Fuel inlet, same line as was before. Throttle cable, the exact same, the exact same situation. I mean, it, almost everything fell right back onto this throttle body because it is not that much different. It's just bigger internally. Got four more injectors in it. So uh, now we just got to swap out the old wide band. It kind of gave us some fits. Uh, we were moving it around the other week, and I think maybe because we started it, they've never really let it warm up. Oh, yeah. We just started to move it, started to move it, started to move it. Uh, and I think we might have gotten some fuel in that wide band because uh, last time we started it, it was showing like a 35.8 air fuel, and it was not happy. It kept trying to add more fuel to it, thinking it was lean, and it was burning our eyeballs. Thankfully, the new EFI came with a new wide band, so we'll get this in the air and swap that out real quick. And then we'll do our first fire, which should be... Should Hopefully. be seamless. Hopefully uneventful. Holly's never let me down on a first fire, so I'll go ahead and jinx us now. <laughs> they always start up. The best part is we look like superheroes every time. Because like, <laughs> That's true. Okay, turn the key. Oh, look, it works. Yep. Who would have guessed? And we're professionals again. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get it in the air, throw on the white band, and uh, we'll bring you back for a first start. And here we are under the Mustang. We found a uh, front sump leak here. I think the crush washer has given up on me, so... We'll, uh, we'll get that fixed and also found some coolant and upon inspection. I see that's wet. There's some water leaking down the sides of the radiator. So at some point that's given up. Oh yeah. Pretty but uh, the back of the pen, the rear main, of course, these all leak. I think it's just a Ford thing. That's how you know it has oil. It's like a Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson indicator? Yep. And then moving back, there's that TKO to the aluminum drive shaft, to the Flowmasters. You gotta have Flowmasters. I'm a child of the, the 90s, so that's got to be a thing. We've already got big tires, disc brakes, 373 posi, 31 spline axles, upgraded drive shaft, yokes, transmission. Gallo 12 or uh, Gallo 24? Huh? Gallo 12 or Gallo 24? Uh, whatever works. What's the better engine for my Skyline? <laughs> I'm too old for that nonsense. And then uh, I think there's a Fidanza? Is oh. that how you say that? Flywheel? Flywheel, aluminum, mm -hmm. lightweight, which I hated as soon as I put it in because you lose all that inertia. Mm -hmm. And when we have a sticky clutch, it's either it's, it turns into an on off switch. Yeah, you have but, to send this thing when you're driving it. <laughs> you do. Which just makes me drive it the way I do. <laughs> Honestly, officer, I have to do it or it'll die. Yep. I, I can't get off a starting, or I can't get out of a stoplight without spinning the tire at least a couple times. Ooh, we need to put a zip tie in there. Wires hanging in the strut. Well, this has become a zip tie machine. Eh, race car. It's like, yeah, it's half track car, so that's, that, that happens. <sighs> cool, man. Uh, so what do you say we put it on the ground and hook up that O2 sensor and... I think it's good. Make some noise. Push button. Quite a bit rich. It's just now getting to that 160 degrees, though. It should clear up instantly when it does. There it is, 160. Now it should go into closed loop and start pulling timing. 
should see this learn in the bottom left corner start really stacking up quick. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's pulling a lot of fuel out. So we'll drive it for a quick, we'll put a couple drive cycles on it real quick. There we go, we're up 13, 14. 15% of fuel. Now you see our AFRs are back up to 14. Ah, uh, it's doing really well actually. Yeah, it's just getting better and better. Our IX at 12%, that's that's good. <laughs> 25%. So we should probably apply a quick learn before we go drive. And then uh, send it. Then we'll send it. Lean so, it out. See you shortly. Can't really see much, but. We've got what three or four learn cycles on it now. Yep. It was pulling up to 33% of fuel at one time. Not sh I'm not shocked. This is a massive throttle body. I think it's a left turn. <laughs> it's got that throttle assisted steering. Yeah. It's already running very well. I would oh, yeah. say it's almost it's 89% what it was uh, just four or five miles ago. We'll give it a rip here. Oh, rip time. Rip time. <laughs> I'm already impressed with how this is running. Yeah. After just a couple of uh, tuning cycles. So it smooths the fuel tram it up. I also think it smooths the timing curve and that's really out of the box. You'll notice when you drive your car for the first time, your timing comes in in steps. You'll have th three increments, idle, part throttle, and full throttle. Uh, and you'll notice it. It'll pull your head back as soon as you jump into that next, that next segment of timing. But after a couple of learns, keep applying those learns and it'll smooth out. It's a little low on coolant, so we're gonna have to shut it off, let it cool down to add some coolant. But uh, as you can see, the idles come back down to around 780, 790. I'm going to call that a win. That was a 20, 30 minute EFI swap. So fingers crossed on the next two EFI swaps. Uh, this was one of three. Yep. So hopefully the next go as easy as this one did. And uh, hopefully you tune in to check it out. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, got the hazards. We're ready to street race, boys. You gotta have hazards. <laughs>